you know, you can you can divide clubs and lists into four stages for mine. Rebuilding, building, contending, and then that's a terrible piece of terra firma called no man's land. Where would you have Collingwood right now? Because they appear to be floating in that area. Yeah, well, I, that's exactly where I would have them, Jared, in no man's land. And, and there, there are a number of reasons, but if I can focus on two, the reason they're not rebuilding, I don't think, they, I don't think anyone thinks they're contending. The reason they're not at the other end and rebuilding is they were the older side mm. on the weekend. They, they fielded the older side in the competition. And you can't be rebuilding having just traded your highest draft pick over the last four years in Jaden Stevenson. So so those two things, oldest and, and trading, so they're the antithesis of yep. a rebuild. So they're in no man's land. That's where they're stuck at the well, moment. Uh, and they played in the grand final in 2018. It's a bit of a repeat of 2010-2011 uh, where walking away from that grand final, even though they did lose both those grand finals, you think, oh, you know, they're, they're a pretty good young side. They're in their prime for the next three or four years. They should cash in. And they've been gradually on the downhill slope on both occasions. So, disappointing. And now they're midfield, which is the key to most clubs. Uh, Their midfield's ageing and in real trouble. Yeah, just on that, before we move on, the irony for Collingwood is this, is that at least... So seven players, ten games are under the Giants. Giants. Their hand was forced, the Giants. Mm. We kept seeing the Giants serving up the same <clears> stuff <throat> and we keep questioning why, why, you got all these kids. Why? You mentioned last week this might force their hand. It forced their hand, played these kids that we hadn't seen, quite a few of them, and they get a great result. The irony, yeah, these are the, what the kids that we're talking mm, yeah. about and they're the ones that are missing. The irony in this is that Collingwood only had Jamie Elliott, really. Mm. So what's going to force their hand for change? Or are they going to serve up the same stuff this week against West Coast and play the same people in the same positions and go with the same group and maybe even get the same result? So we can go back to tactics, we can go back to structures, and we'll take a look at that. But to me, what was missing most, it, it, it was just spirit. They played with no intensity. They played with... with None of that verve that has been part and parcel of this group for the last three years. Well, you don't agree with that. Well, I, I was there. I, I, it didn't stand out. I, I, Jeez, it did to me. I, so, so watching on the day, I didn't think it was a, a really clear lack of effort. You know, the ability to spread. I, I just thought there was a there was a sameness to them. The same sort of stuff that we've seen from the same personnel and the same style. It's an unimaginative footy club. Yeah, and yeah. so so where they sit right now is I think this, it's a group that's in need of real invigoration. You can't keep doing what you're doing the way you're doing it with what you've got and the people that you've got out there. So I think it's it's a tipping point now for, for Nathan Buckley in terms of either the way he's trying to capture the imagination of the group and the people that he's trotting out every weekend. Because in particular, the Ford line, Brownie, like they've had Ford struggles for a number of yeah. years. I, I just look at the, the players they've got up there in that Ford line and look at who they've been targeting. So my check and Cox have both doubled the amount of targets that Jordan Dugowie has yeah. had so far this year. But the goal is your one. He, he's really the ace in, in, in what is a pretty average, mediocre forward line. Well, he's the one that win, wins contests. Well, have, have a look yeah. at this, Brownie. Over the yeah. last four years, he's the seventh best contested yeah. one-on-one player in the game. So that means you kick it into him. He's in a one-on-one contest. He's the seventh best in the competition. But he's not being utilised like that. So I think... There are levers for Nathan Buckley to be able to pull gas, to we, try things a bit differently. We, and the forward line stuff we talked about a long time. So the, the players you mentioned there, my chair, Cox, the goey, that's Tom McDonald, that's Luke Jackson, mm. that's Christian Petrarca. Melbourne lost their two... Now, I'm not saying Melbourne are the panacea, mm. but Melbourne lost their two key forwards, but they've found a way to be dangerous. They've found a way to be a bit more creative, and they've found a way, we'll show in a moment, where when it goes in there, it just they, they work their backsides off before it comes Is out. Is that coaching? Well, you've got to be able to tap into something is what I'm saying. When, you, when your two key forwards are gone like Melbourne have and they haven't got one, they've got more down the back half, you've got to be inventive. You've got to create, you've got to create something else. What's your view on the way the ball's going into the forward line? Yeah, well, I think at times it looks like they're going for the perfect play, yeah. particularly to Jordan Dugowie. So it's a lot of this sort of stuff where it's, it's millionaire stuff when it comes off. Like this is, you know... A, a, it's a, it's a miracle-type kick. So we know he's a great one-on-one player, but I just don't think they're getting the maximum value out of a player so like Dugowie. Against Carlton, we saw it, mm. didn't we? I was going to say, yeah. Dugowie and Elliot. Elliot. So yep. what happens? Clubs go to work on that. Yep. You're not going to get the leading line. You're not going to get... I mean, you just see... And I wouldn't exactly... We wouldn't exactly call uh, Carlton gold standard at the moment in terms of the way they're defending the field with their team structure. Yeah. False economy, that one, I, I think. think. But Yeah, yeah but, I, but I still think there are levers to pull. But, but you're right. The, the imagination and selling hope to the group is now the most important uh, weapon in Nathan Buckley's arsenal because they, they, there is just a sameness about them. Perhaps the biggest question that needs to be addressed uh, as soon as possible is the future of the coach himself and he put it on the agenda earlier this year. 
I don't feel like I have to be the senior coach going forward if that's the best thing for the club. And I feel that I can still impact and help the club move towards contending consistently and winning flags. Well, then I'll put my hand up. And if the club felt that it was better to go in another direction, well, then I would understand that. Let's move to Tom Morris, who broke a big story over the weekend about the future of Melbourne President Glenn Barr. Uh, Tom, welcome to you. What can you tell us? about the pies. Well, Jared, I've spent all day talking to people in Collingwood Football Club and around Collingwood Football Club, and it's patently clear that the wheels are falling off at the Magpies. Unfortunately for Nathan Buckley, he's not the same coach as what he was in 2018 and 2019. I think hub life absolutely affected him last year, as it did to lots of people. The trade period and the erosion of trust that existed after that has affected him. And in 2021, there's a view among senior people within the club that he just isn't getting the best out of this playing group at the moment. Now, Someone like Brody Grundy and Jordan Roughhead, they're senior players, um, they're talented players, they've been there for a long period of time. They've been very vocal internally. There's others like Scott Pendlebury, the captain. He's a Buckley man. Like He will stand by Nathan Buckley to the very end. And he distances himself from any sort of these internal grumblings. But it's also too simplistic to say that Nathan Buckley is the sole problem. We know that it's more nuanced than that. They've got uh, no permanent president. They've got injuries to Jamie Elliott and Taylor Adams, the latest one as well. And they're a weaker team. They traded out three of their to- three of their best players last year uh, and-, and for three mid-range draft picks. They tried to get Jack Gunston under contract, best and fairest, couldn't get him. They tried to get Zach Merritt under contract, second in the best and fairest. They couldn't get him. So maybe Buckley doesn't have the cattle at all. Maybe he's fresh out of ideas. Either way, Graham Wright's come into the club from Hawthorne in January and people inside the club know how important his role is going to be as the head of football. He's watching everything unfold. He's watching Nathan Buckley coach, mm. not get the best out of the club. Uh, and it's not unsalvageable at the moment. That's, that's very clear. But it's a long way back. And Nathan Buckley's at the very centre of it. Yes, thanks, Tom. Still plenty of uh, games left to bring this back on track. I think the biggest point that Tom made there for mine is that they're dealing with less chess pieces. They're three midfielders down and they haven't replaced them, which makes the whole thing look a little bit uh, the same. But Nathan Buckley has got a major issue on his chance and I suspect he's happy that he's getting on a plane and he's travelling to the west where they had a big, big victory last year. Uh, ben Rutten two weeks ago had a massive issue as well. So it, I think the challenge is there. No one for a second would be suggesting that he's anything other than committed but when you come out and say well, if I'm not there at the end of the year and then you're one and three and you've offloaded the Trelaw was messy and you've got players within the group that, who would have been close, that all sort of builds. Mm. And now I don't, I, obviously I've got no insight do, into do what's you think going players, on. Do you think players hear that? Like are players in tune enough to what's happening in the football world that they would hear the coach say that and, and think about, well, you know, Bucks doesn't even know if he's going to be here. You wouldn't, and you wouldn't, and maybe, yeah, well, certainly you wouldn't. 80% probably wouldn't, but then some percentage of that group would look at it and go, well, is he all in with us or not? You know, but again... The cell behind the scenes we don't see. But that, but that is his challenge. He's got to regenerate. They're going to Perth. You know, maybe it's the spill your soul. It's been a hard sort of conversation. He, when he changed, he became this more empathetic. Mm. That from the outside and what we know from the inside. And it seemed to resonate really strongly with the group. Now, whether that's still there or not, I'm not sure. But that, that's the challenge. That's a coaching challenge, Brownie, isn't it? Absolutely. I don't, I don't think you, you made the point before, Gaz. I don't think they've been able to recover from what was a terrible trade period. Just the whole narrative around that trade period, the way Nathan Buckley and the rest of the crew handled it all there. I've been involved in a footy club in 2010 when the Brisbane Lions got involved heavily at the trade period, most notably Brendan Favola, ousted a couple of our favourite sons mm. in, in Richard Tully and uh, Dan Bradshaw, and that created rumblings beyond the scenes. There was some distrust in the playing group, there was some talking around corners, and then the group just has to do everything right from that point on, and they haven't been able to do that. And then it, it just seems to have continued on. Then you mm. hear the comments from Bucks, if everything was flying and they had a good trade period, I, don't, I think you'd gloss over those comments pretty easily. But it's been one thing after another, and I don't think you can have a successful campaign when these sort of troubled waters are bubbling away in the background. 